Welcome to a crash course on ink. In this video, I'm going to cover knots, diverts, and choices, three key terms and concepts used within ink. Let's get started though with some text. Notice over on the left hand side when I typed, it showed up over here on the right hand side. The left hand side in Inky, which is what I'm using to do this, has a, shows us the code. The right hand side shows us a preview of the result. So currently we see the text, I walked along the beach, and then we see end of story. End of story helpfully tells us that this is the end of the story. So we know then I can add stuff on the left hand side and it'll preview on the right hand side. In ink, knots are locations within a story. We can think of them as sections or different parts, but a good metaphor is to think of them as locations. So we create a knot in ink by typing two equal signs, the name of the knot, and two more equal signs. So now we have a knot within this story. Notice, however, that we have an error. So if I put the cursor over the error, it tells me that it's expected at least one line within the knot but saw end of line. So now we know something else about knots. We create them using two equal signs, the name of the knot, and then two equal signs. We also know that knots need at least one line of content, one line of data. It needs something, which makes sense. We can't really have an empty location within a story that's not very useful. So I'm going to add some more text. And so now we see the waves erased my footprints as I walked. And notice it gives me a new error. Well, now it says an apparent loose end exists where the flow runs out. Do you need a done statement, choice, or divert? Well, this is helpful because it moves us to the next concept. So we started with knots, and remember we can create a knot using two equal signs, the name of the knot, and then two equal signs. And knots are locations within a story. Now, a location is not particularly useful unless you can somehow get to that location. And so we get to a location within a story using concept called a divert. A divert within ink uses the arrow pointing to the right and then the name of the knot we want to go to. So now we are diverting from wherever we were to a new location. And we can see that right here. We have our first line of text, I walked along the beach. Then we diverted using a divert line three, and now we move to line four, this knot named beach. And now we see the next text in order, the waves erased my footprints as I walked. Well, now it shows us a new error, and it says it's ran, run out of content, do you need a done or end? And notice it's using an arrow. Well, it's now told us two bits of new information. There are two special knots within ink, done and end. A done closes out all current threads. An end ends the story. In practice, both knots are more or less the same thing, unless in more complex examples. So then, we know that we need some way to end. Well, what's going on? Now, I mentioned earlier, as I was reading the error text, that it mentioned the word flow. Ink uses this metaphor of a weave, that is different pieces of thread all coming together in a larger woven shape. So our flow is a movement along certain threads towards a certain end. It is one movement through a story is a flow. The weave is the entire story and all possible combinations and threads and choices. So we know then we can move through a flow and get to an end of it. So we need to tell ink when to end that flow, which is what this error actually is saying. It's run out of content, but we didn't tell it to end yet, and so it's very confused. Notice we see it again. Apparent loose end exists where the flow runs out. We've come into a flow, and now there's nothing else, and so ink is very confused.
So we need to divert to one of those special knots I mentioned, either done or end. Notice now the errors went away. So we've moved then through our initial text, I walked along the beach, diverted line 3 to the knot line 5, and then moved the waves erased my footprints as I walked, and then done. We're moving to the divert special name done to end this thread. We've also ended the story because there are no other threads. So we've moved through two different concepts here. Knots, we know as locations in a story, and diverts, which use the arrow, move us between knots. Now let's say in this example I wanted to walk along the beach several times. We can do that through something called choices. Choices are what branches flows within a weave. So we've got all of these different things, a weave with an ink, different paths through that weave. Think of it different threads through like a larger quilt. And so we're moving along this thread, moving along this flow, and now we want to move to another thread. Well, we do that through branching structures, and the branches are the choices we write as an author. So I mentioned I want to keep walking along the beach. I don't want our story just the end. So I do that through adding choices. I can add choices by using the asterisk and then the name of the choice I want. Walk more to create our first choice. Now notice over on the right hand side it added that text and then went to the end of the story. Let's restart the story and I do that through clicking on the rightmost option and now we see we have an option here, walk more. Well, options are what are shown to users, choices are what we write as an author. So we created a choice, line 6 with an asterisk right here, with the text walk more. The option shown to the user is walk more. And if I click on it, if I make choose that option, we see the next thing in order. The waves erase my footprints as I walked and diverting to the knot, done. So the story ends. Well, I don't want the story to end, and we want I want to write more choices and give the user more options. So the option is either to walk more or to leave the beach. Now notice it gave us a similar error again, ran out of content. We created a branching structure, two different possible flows here, but neither of them have their own content. So we do that by adding content inside of that choice. So what I'm going to do then is copy this, go to edit, cut, put a new space under walk more, tab in, and place text within, within it. Now we're still getting the new error, but I want to talk for a second about why I use the tab. Ink doesn't really care how we write choices. We can write choices and then write the text under the choice and it will read it fine. As we're working with authors like ourselves or potentially a collaboration with other authors, we want the code to be much easier to read. So we add in readability by putting in a tab in under that choice. So we have a choice and then we tab in about what's under that choice. It just helps us with uh, visibility and being easier to read the code. So we have this text under here. The waves, waves erased my footprints as I walked. Now, I mentioned I want to keep walking on this beach. So one way to do that then is to use a divert to the same knot we're in. So we're moving back to that location. So now I have a divert that moves me back to the beach. Now I'm going to adjust this code just slightly so it looks like this. So we see the divert under walk more is line 8, and the divert to done is under leave beach on line 10. These are two different flows through this weave. We can either keep looping back to beach, or we can go to done and leave beach. So I'm going to restart the story, the leftmost arrow, and now I see our two different options as a user, walk more or leave beach. If I click on walk more, well, it showed me that text and then looped me back from beach, and now I see leave beach. 
Well, that's not exactly what I wanted. I wanted to keep walking along the beach. Well, we just learned something about choices. Within a set of choices, you can only choose one of that set. When that choice is chosen, it is no longer an option. So choices are finite. We can make a choice from a set, and then we can't make the same choice again. That is, we can't make the same choice again unless we make them sticky choices. With an ink, a sticky choice doesn't use the asterisk, it uses the plus symbol. So now I've added these two different plus symbols where the asterisks were on line 6 and line 9. These are now sticky choices. If I restart my story, we see, starting from the top, our initial text, our divert to the not beach, the not beach right here on line 5, then our two different sticky choices, line 6 and line 9, both of which use the plus symbol. We see under those choices the two different outcomes, the two different flows that can occur. If I click on walk more over here, this option, I see the text walk more, then the text that's underneath that, and then it diverts back to beach and presents us the same options again, both of which are sticky. Walk more, walk more, walk more, which is exactly what I want to happen. Now I want to clean this up a little bit. It's good to give users choices. It's good to give users options that we write as an author. But I don't necessarily want that text to appear. Well, now I can use something called selective output or a selective choice. I use that by using open and closing square brackets around what I want to signal as selective. Now, it's selective in that it shows up as an option, but doesn't necessarily show up as the text. Let me show you an example. So if I put opening and closing, square brackets around line 6, the text walk more, it no longer shows up within the text. So it's still an option, as we see over here on the right hand side, but now it doesn't show up. And notice it immediately fixed my flow through this. As I was playing through this, we stopped at a certain point, and it adjusted that for me. So let's restart. And now we see two different options, walk more and leave beach. If we click on walk more, we see the text, but we no longer see the choice, which is what we want to happen now. And so we have our text under this, which is now selective. It's also a sticky choice, remember, because it's using the plus sign and it's sticking around. So we see walk more, walk more, walk more, all of which we expect to happen. If I click on leave beach, Finally, we are diverted to the special knot done, that thread ends, there's no more content in the story, and the story also ends. So let's review everything I've talked about in this video. I've talked about knots, diverts, and choices. Now we understand a knot to be some location within a story. We create a knot using two equal sign, the name of the knot, and then two more equal signs. And this creates a knot within a story, some location. We can move to that location using a divert, using an arrow pointing to the right and then the name of what we want to go to. So we can move through locations using diverts. We then move to that knot. Within a knot, we have different content. And we know from much earlier in this video that it has to have at least one line of content or ink complains to us. So we have to have something within a knot. We have to have something in a location. We can't just have an empty location. So we have content within this knot. And the content that we added are two different choices, two different flows through the weave. And I've continually come back to these terms of ink understands a weave to be everything within a story, all choices, all flows, and a flow to be a single path through things. And in fact, we saw errors because if a flow ever runs out of content, ink flags that as an error and shows us that we need something else there. So ink is keeping track of these flows for us and is helping us out to remind us where we can place content within a flow and how the flows fit into the larger weave. So we then talked about choices. We had choices initially as asterisks, but then we realized that once something has been chosen, it's no longer part of that set and can no longer be chosen again. We can only choose one time.
But if we want choices to stick around, we make them sticky. We make them sticky through using the plus symbol instead of the asterisk. So now we have sticky choices, walk more and leave beach, each of which have their own flows. Through walk more, the flow runs at the next text and then diverts back to beach. And we also learned that diverts can loop back to the same knot they're in. We also saw the special knot done and end, done closing, all, closing the current thread and end ending the story, both of which, unless the, the story is much more complex, achieve roughly the same goal. In our case, achieve the same goal. We could use done or we could use end and that would stop the story. So we then finally close this out with selective text. Selective text was text that showed up as an option for a user. Options are on the right hand side, choices are on the left, but didn't show up as text within that story after the user chose it. So we used select text to create a choice that showed up as an option over here on the right, options on the right, choices on the left. We chose it but it didn't show up as text, so it was selective. And then we did that through using open and closing square brackets. So using these three different concepts of knots, diverts, and choices, we can create very complex projects within ink. Moving between locations in a story, there's knots, and using that movement, the diverts, and then creating choices in those different locations to create options for a user to click on and interact with to move through different flows within the larger weave of an ink story. Thanks for watching.